All right, go with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 13. I don't know about you, but <laughs> hey, hey, y'all might have to get strapped to the chair in about two seconds here. My God, my God, my God. Look at what he did. Look at what he did. Look at, just look at what he did. Praise the Lord. John chapter 13, look at verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them to the end. Amen. Yes, sir. Look what the Amplified says. Now before the Passover feast began, Jesus knew was fully aware that the time had come for him to leave this world and return to the Father. And as he had loved those that were his own in the world, he loved them to the last and to the highest degree. Now, I'm going to point out something to you here, and I want you to follow me. Because you're going to see something here you probably have never seen before. Verse 2, and supper being ended, the devil, now having put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, and Jesus knowing, this key phrase here, and Jesus knowing, that the Father had put all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. Jesus knowing, he's about to go to the Father. He has come from God. He's about to go back to God. What we're talking about here is Jesus knowing the redemptive cycle. He came from the Father. He's about to go back to the Father. And now he's about to demonstrate to them what he's going to do. And this demonstration is him loving us to the end, to the full. What we're about to see is him loving us to the highest degree. Him rising from supper laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he had poured water into a basin, began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter and saith unto him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, What I do you don't know now, but you will know hereafter. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus said, If I wash thee not, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said, But Lord, not my feet only then, my hands and my head. And Jesus said, He that is washed, neither is not to save to wash but his feet, but is clean every whit, and you are Clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, you're not all clean. Now look, so after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said, know you what I've done to you? He hadn't been to the cross yet. They didn't know. But he acted out what is revealed in Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 through 11. Jesus was at supper, sitting at the table, one with the Father. Amen. He got up in glory and laid aside his garments. He took on a robe of fleshly humanity. He wrapped himself in a towel. He stooped down to the lowest place to wash off the filth. Listen now. He washed their feet with water. Now listen, this is amazing. And he took off the towel and dried their feet to clean them. That means he's naked. That means the body which he clothed himself with he washed the sin and the residue of their walk through this world off of their feet with his own body. Do you see what's happening here? <laughs> and after he had said, not, Peter said, not my feet, my hands and my head. He said, no, no, you don't understand. 
If I've washed any part of you, you're every whit clean. I washed you from the feet. I went to the lowest place, which cleanses you to the highest place. And this is a picture of him leaving the Father, descending into humanity, robing himself with a fleshly body, taking that off on the cross, stooping down because of that body he laid in that tomb to the lowest hell. And when we were forgiven and completely washed, it says he rose up again, took his garments back, sat back down. Do you see what he did? They didn't know yet. He said, you will know, though. You will know what I'm doing. I left the Father. Jesus, knowing he had come from the Father, all things are given into his hands. And now he's about to go back to the Father. He's going to complete the circle. He got up from supper with the Father, laid aside his right to operate as God, his royal, dignified glory that he had as the Son of God. And he took on the form of the seed of Abraham and clothed himself with the sinful flesh of man. Was even baptized in the Jordan River as an act of repentance, even though he didn't commit any sin, to identify with sinful humanity. And didn't walk the earth as the Son of God, but did his miracles as the seed of Abraham with the anointing of a prophet under the blood Abrahamic covenant. And then, as the spotless lamb offered by the high priest, who said it's better that one man die than a whole nation perish, not knowing he was fulfilling the scripture, nailed him to a tree. And through the body of his flesh, that towel, when he took it off, when his body bled and his body died, I hung on that tree, you hung on that tree. And through his body, my feet got washed. And he went to the lowest hell to finish the transaction, to deliver me from the sin nature, declare me clean and right with God. And when I was fully washed, he arose, took his garments back, and because it was finished, sat down. Whoa! At the right hand of God Almighty. Now what I'm trying to get you to see is he loved them to the fullest degree. He left the Father because he loved us. He left glory and came to earth because he loved us. He took off his robes and wore our clothes because he loved us. He made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant because he loved us. And then he died in his body when he didn't have to, became naked in front of a jeering mob and washed our sins in his own blood because he loved us. Then he went to hell to finish the job and declared me forever clean every whit, taking my place because he loved me. And then he rose again from the dead, picked his body up, ascended into heaven, put his garments back on, and sat down with every name and being in three worlds now under his feet. He washed the feet. Do you get it? The feet aren't in the head, the feet are in the body. He's risen far above principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that is named. They're far beneath his feet. They can't touch us. We're out of reach. Love has separated us from the curse. Yes. 
the royal law of love. Now, let me finish this section. I'll seek the Lord. I don't know that I'm feeling right in here like we're getting there now. I think we've, I think we've kind of connected the dots. We're seeing it. We understand it now. So if I can just finish this session with this one idea, to understand the motive behind all manifestation. Now you can know that these aren't just legalistic ways that you pull chains and speak certain words to get God to move, but that God is already predisposed to be for you, that he gave you these laws so he could do what he already wanted to do which is bring you victory. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So look at this with me very quickly. We're going to look at three verses very, very quickly to close this session. First verse, Song of Solomon. Chapter 8, and verse 6. Set me as a seal upon your heart. As a seal upon your arm. For love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. Now this phrase right here. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which has a most vehement flame. You can study this on your own time, but the Song of Solomon, you've heard me say it, I think in other sessions, maybe not in Bible school here. Song of Solomon almost didn't get in our Bible because they couldn't find the name of God in it anywhere. And finally, the scholars found Jehovah in the Song of Solomon. And they found it in Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6. It's this verse that got Song of Solomon in the Bible. And it's translated in the King James, a most vehement flame. The way it should be translated is, love is the ignited flames of Jehovah himself. Love is the ignited flames of Jehovah himself. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. Are you with me here? Yes, sir. Now, listen now. Where they got that from, they say the greatest reference to that, because Song of Solomon is Old Testament, the greatest reference to that is referenced in the, in the uh, ministry of the prophet Elijah. And it's found in 1 Kings 18. And you'll know the story well. How that there were hundreds of prophets, 450 prophets of Baal. And there was a showdown on Mount Carmel. There had been a drought, and he took the most precious thing there was, which was water. They built an altar and put a bullock on the altar and drenched. Can you imagine how much water, how many buckets of water on a mountain it took to fill up a trench where it didn't, the ground didn't soak it up? They're in the middle of a drought. And they poured so much water on this wood and sacrifice that the trench around the altar filled up with water and stood. They did this in a drought. Now, this is sowing in famine. This is knowing God's going to come through. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Well, anyway, without going into the whole story, how many of you remember that there was an answer of God to the man of God? By what? Fire. The ignited flame of Jehovah himself. <laughs> <laughs> we are about to read love in action, love in manifestation. I'm going to read it from the, uh, oh, glory to God. Look at it in verse 37, 1 Kings 18, 37. I'll read Amplified Classic, three verses. Hear me, O Lord, and hear me, that this people may know you are the Lord. You are God, and you have, tur and have turned their hearts back to you. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dirt and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Yeah. 
This is a direct reference to the glory that manifested in the belly of hell itself. There wasn't anything left here but a circle of smoking embers. Not even embers. The water evaporated. The rocks melted. The dust got licked up. It was like a crater. The fire was so intense, you know, you know what happens when you take even sand and melt it, they blow glass. I mean, you got to get this picture. We're talking about, oh, that's what happened to Jesus. When all the demons all at once and all their power was trying to hold him there. And Jesus was loosed from the pangs of death because it was impossible for him to be held by it. Because the resurrection power of Almighty God was a manifestation of the ignited flame of Jehovah himself to the lowest hell, blowing off of our lives every trace of satanic dominance because he loved us. That's why Jesus asked him. He loved him to the end to the highest degree. Do you know what I've done? I took off my robes. I came down and became a man. I'm about to die on a tree. I'm going to go to the lowest hell. I'm going to cleanse you so that the enemy can never touch you again. I'm going to rise from the dead by the glorious act of the almighty power that created the universe. And as I am, so are you in this world. So if he'll release his power to raise me from the dead, He'll release his power to raise you from the dead because he loves you like he loves me. Love did it. Love will cause God to release this lightning for you. Glory, yes. Yes. Glory, glory. Yes. And here's the kicker of the whole thing. He did it when we didn't even deserve. May this go deep in your heart. Love will cause God to release the full extent of his power, dominion, and authority to deliver you from anything, anywhere, at any time, even if you don't deserve it. If you'll just cry out to him. Because love is who he is. He will never change for his children what he does. And if Jesus is in me and I'm in him and we're one in the Father and the Father loves me as he loved Jesus, that the love we're with the Father may be in them as I am in them. If God loves me that much, then what will he do when I get a death sentence? You think he'll leave my soul in hell? He didn't leave Jesus' soul in hell. And I'm the body of Christ. Are you seeing this? If the same spirit that raised him from the dead dwells in me, he'll quicken my death doom body. See, this isn't a problem of believing the disease away. This is being fully persuaded that he loves me so much no disease can stand in his presence and his presence is in me a consuming fire right now. He is a consuming fire. He's in me. He'll never leave me or forsake me. This answers why. Oh, wow. I'm past my time in the session. Y'all okay? Oh, glory to God. This answers why love breaks the covering. Uh, Not love. Um, Fear breaks the covering. Love casts out fear. This answers why fear breaks the covering. Love casts out fear. Fear is not the right spirit. Fear won't let me trust God. I'm tormented. I'm not sure God will move in my behalf. I have fear of man, fear of snakes, fear of disease, fear of calamity, fear of wrecks, fear of flying, fear of claustrophobic, fear of elevators, fear of heights. Fear. No, it's fear of dying. 
And when you get delivered from the fear of death, it's just a short, little, tiny step to being delivered from the fear of man. Then we have boldness in the day of judgment. Because perfect love casts out all fear. The royal law of love. I don't know the way I said that. I can just feel it. Where the word of a king is, there's power. It's a law. Love is as strong as death. See, this is going to lead us right into. Now we got the now we have the basis to start studying the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Because love is as strong as death. Love captured and conquered death. Love destroyed the law of sin and death. Love won't let the law of sin and death operate in me. Right. <clears throat> love caused life to manifest for me. Love destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light. That means what's in my future? Life. What's in my future? Blessing. Prosperity. Deliverance. Victory. Oh, it's impossible but that offenses will come. Sure, you're going to have challenges. We're in this world that is not yet received its full salvation. But you're in the world, but you're not of it. You're of God, little children. And have overcome them because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Guess what? You live by faith which works by love. You live under the royal law, the law of all laws. And there is nothing that can separate you from what the Father has promised you you could have. Glory to God. Not height, not depth, nor angels, nor principalities, nor life, nor death, nor anything present, nor anything to come, nor any other creature can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. Shout this out. Shout this out as we close. Nay. Nay. No. No. There's nothing nothing that can separate me. That can separate me. Who shall separate me? Who shall separate me? Shall tribulation? Shall tribulation? Famine? Famine? Persecution? Persecution? Peril? Peril? Sword? Sword? No. No. A thousand times no. Listen to this. For I am persuaded. For I am persuaded. Now you got the connection. A revelation of the love of God, you are what? Persuaded. If God be for me, who could be against me? I am persuaded. in Christ Jesus. My Lord. Glory to God, friend. Thank you for joining the broadcast today. I want to encourage you to allow the very power of the love of God that you experienced and witnessed both in that classroom and through the broadcast today to have its full effect in your life. Did you know the scripture says that we can cast all of our care over on him because he cares for us. His care for us is the love of God in manifestation. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. You've already heard it, but it bears repeating that the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loved you. You know, when he raised Jesus from the dead, it was the greatest creative act since the history of the world. He had no opposition when he created the world, but all of hell was trying to hold Jesus in the ground and the very love of God and its power released in the ignited flame of Jehovah at its fullest extent, blew Satan back, rose Jesus from the dead. He took the keys and in turn gave those keys to you and me and the privilege to use his name. He loved them to the very end or to the highest degree. 
He's the same today. He loves you to the highest degree now. Won't you receive the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow with it? Won't you connect with us at nomorecurse.tv or experiencehim.org? Keep your faith fed. Sign up for that covenant harvest letter, even electronically, and know that the Lord loves you. We love you. And today there should be no more curse in your life. Put your hand on that screen. Let me bless you today. I bless you today by the power and authority of the mighty name of Jesus. Are you ready to step into your destiny? Your life will be forever transformed as you grow in your relationship with God. Become established in strong faith grounded upon God's Word and become empowered to impact your world. If you're ready to answer the assignment of the Holy Spirit and become a world changer, come train with us. Often the first step on a new journey is the hardest, but we are here to help every step of the way. Apply today, either through the online application or by mail. Our core curriculum will begin with classes on righteousness, authority of the believer, and faith. Our instructors will impart biblical revelation knowledge and application, as well as practical ministry experience. Experience School of Him for yourself. You will never be the same. Wow, what a wonderful message. Thank you for watching and tuning in. We here at Harvest International Ministries know that your time is valuable. So we want to make connecting with us as easy as it can get. For example, we know you caught this broadcast, but there might be a TV show you miss. So head over to TracyHarris.tv. You can watch this show again or any others we produce 24 seven on demand to build your faith and change your world. Also, head over to experiencehim.org. We have blog posts. You can check out our monthly partner letter, our seasonal magazine, or you can even download free copies of any of Brother Tracy's books. But we don't want to be the only ones doing the talking. We want to hear your prayer requests. We want to hear your praise reports. So email us at the website or message us on Facebook and Instagram to let us know what's going on in your life. Finally, we know we have a worldwide footprint and we're so thankful Jesus gave it to us. But we know that means not everybody can worship with us physically. So make sure to join us Sunday mornings on Facebook Live, YouTube, Roku, and TracyHarris.tv. We are so glad you stayed. We pray you enjoyed the message, and we pray that Jesus brings His grace, His wonderful, wonderful peace in your life, and that He touches you with all He is into all you are. Give Him your life today and let Him do something with it. And go out and change your world. Have peace in Jesus' name.